doing great, man. How are you doing? Great. I'm just here. I've done about 20 press interviews today uh, at the Techfluence conference, and I am ready for my next uh, coffee. I don't have time to go to Starbucks, and I don't know if you heard, there's like a pandemic going on, so you don't really want to go there anyway. So no. I got my my oat milk, uh, my 12 ice cubes, my maple syrup, my shot of espresso, very important, uh, mm -hmm. and then my cinnamon and a little drip of maple syrup, and I'm going to blend it uh, right here, right now. I can do, you know, 15 of these before I got to recharge and then just use, I got a, I have it locked right now, so you can lock it so it doesn't accidentally turn on in your bag or something like that. So you can just load up all your ingredients and then hit blend, and there you go. Now we're blending. And then just 20 seconds, you can have a smoothie that, or a frappuccino, that uh, rivals what you'd get out of a big blender, which would usually take a lot longer, or what you get, you know, for seven bucks from maybe Jamba Juice or Starbucks. <laughs> Uh, and it's really delicious, and the consistency is just perfect. Uh, and in fact, I'm really going to drink this. This isn't just for show. I actually need this. So you'll have to excuse me for a minute while I uh, drink Feel my free, man. drink. Do it. it. Mm. <laughs> One of the things that uh, that uh, I know Next Level and I, we're, we're constantly busy, constantly moving, constantly doing stuff. I'm always out in the market for good good blenders out there and sometimes it's 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 really difficult to be like let me pull up the entire machine let me plug it in then where's the top where's the cover where uh and then i'm over here like i gotta go forget this i'm going to starbucks <laughs> indeed and you know that's actually an interesting thing that you mentioned right so i mean it comes in 16 different colors just a color for everybody we invented the portable blender this is one of the hottest gifts of the holiday season so every three seconds during the holiday season, we sold one Blendjet 2 on our website. Wow. So crazy. We have millions of customers in 195 countries. We invented the original portable blender, started on it in 2017, launched in June of 2018, You know, sold out right away, first 7,000 units gone within a matter of weeks. By the end of the year, over 100,000 customers, You know, now millions. And the Blendjet 2, it's like going from the Tesla Roadster 1.0 to like a brand new 2021 model three or X or Y or whatever, you know, you like, uh, except we don't have boombox mode. We don't have that. So, right, right. Uh, but you know, the, the product quality and the power, this now rivals your kitchen blender. You know, you, you're called next level. Uh, we're called the next gen blender. There you go. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it really is right. If you think about computers, they used to take up a whole room. They used to be, you know, these big giant things. Then they're on your desk. Then they're in your lap. Now they're in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. And the computer we all use the most now is this one. Yeah. So you think about the form factor and how it's changed so dramatically. And as a result, the frequency of use and the variety of use case has changed dramatically. Our average customer uses our product more than one time per day for so many different things. It's crazy. For smoothies, for protein shakes, for coffee beverages, for margaritas. I know we could all use a little extra frozen margarita in our lives, for sure. at least two to three times a day during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, salsas, guacamoles, hummuses, really anything. And what's cool is this blender isn't ugly. The first blender was created in 1922. Guess what? It had a big clunky base, big clunky jar, big clunky lid. The blender design hasn't changed in a hundred years. Yeah. It looks the same. What the hell? Every other thing has been disrupted. This yeah. is the one thing that still literally looks like it did in 1922. Yeah. So, you know, the, the impetus for starting this was not, gee, I want to make a bunch of money selling blenders. I don't care about the money. I don't care about selling units. What I care about is one thing. I had a terrible accident. I cracked my head open. I nearly died. I ended up on medical leave for a year. Before that, I helped raise $110 million to build this. The first, of course, the cord is stuck because it's not wireless, uh, <laughs> to build the first holographic computer. So I worked on this thing and I was literally giving keynotes with Bob Iger, Steve Wozniak, getting to work mm. with you know tech luminaries, building mm. the thing that could show holograms layered on the real world. You could touch them, I could touch them, we could interact together. So you know, that was like a crazy thing to get to do. And then I had this freak accident, cracked my head open, and I can't even read, use a computer, can't think straight, can't talk correctly. I lost my wits. I thought I was going to die. And mm -hmm. what I did to recover was smoothies and protein shakes every day. And that was such a big part of my life. So when I got over that, that hump, and I actually was still 
here on this planet, uh, you know, I wanted to do something different with my life. I was no longer thinking, gee, the way I'm going to judge success in life when I'm on my deathbed is looking back and going, how much money did I make? Who cares? What mm -hmm. matters is what impact did I have on this world? What did I do that is going to still be here after I'm gone that's going to hopefully be a positive one that I'm going to be proud of or that I could be proud of? And to me, knowing how impactful smoothies and protein shakes were to me and thinking about health and thinking about how popular fast food is, it was like, well, why is fast food so popular? And it's convenience. It's more convenient to get in my car and drive through a drive through than it is to make something. You know, and we wanted to make it easier for people to live longer and healthier lives. And that was why we created this. And, you know, the the trajectory from zero to millions of customers has been so fast. No investment, just investing my own money and my business partner and I just, you know, bootstrapping together and, uh, you know, really listening to our customers. And, you know, the first product was good, but the second product, I mean, you know, I mean, you see you see the product, right? I mean, you you yeah. read the reviews from the customers, you know, Forbes called every other blender compared to a Blendjet, a dinosaur. And I like to think that uh, Blendjet 2 is an asteroid and all the traditional blenders are uh, dinosaurs and they're on their <laughs> way to extinction. <laughs> and, you know, it's not just good for Blendjet. It's really, truly good for the people that have the product. I mean, the average customer is using it at lunchtime. That's the most popular time of day that they use it. And they're using it as a meal supplement or a meal replacement. And it's really, you know, it's not hurting other blender companies. It's hurting McDonald's. You know, they got they got plenty of money. So it's not really a problem, you know, for, <laughs> for them. They probably won't even notice. But yeah. uh, there's just nothing that I could be working on that's more fulfilling in my life than this. And I'm, I'm you know, I hated what I went through and I wouldn't wish it upon anybody, but I also wouldn't undo it. It was, uh, it was, it was a personal hell, to be honest. Uh, but it was worth going through it. A little bit of suffering for me, if it gets to benefit, you know, a whole lot of other people, because now they have an easy way to make something healthy. Mm -hmm. For sure, it's awesome. I, I, yeah. When, when I, when I've seen the Blendjet too, and and what it does, and for me, the biggest feature is the on the go. Um, there's, uh, uh, well, it's funny. I, when, you know, when we were able to go to the gyms and stuff like that, um, I would go to my sister sometimes I'd be like, go pick her up and we'll go on a hike or whatever. And I would have my cup with whatever juice and it had like a little metal ball to shake everything in there, oh, yeah. you know? And then, um, I would carry like a little, uh, like just a, just a plat, like a little tiny plastic Tupperware cup of my next meal or my next stuff and to have something like this where you're just like you know you could actually you can carry so much more and then just drop it in there and just blend it right away and th the one thing i do like is how easy like a, a lot of people when they when they want to use blenders especially they don't think about like the cleaning process. They're just like, Hey, does this work? Does this slice? Can I make guacamole or salsa or this other? Can I do, can I, what can I do? But the thing is like, wait a minute, what about the cleaning? This thing is awesome because you just put a little bit of Dawn, some water and you blend that thing <laughs> and clean. You don't have to try to stick your fingers down there and cut yourself or, um, the way this thing is has is, is put together and the innovation behind it, I think is amazing. I, I personally, I think it's, it's great. Um, I see you're are, you to, are you able to see that? Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's how you clean it. It's literally as easy as you said, you know, it's not a gimmick. You really do just put a drop of soap, water blend and boom, you know, it is uh sparkling clean, ready to go for next time. I mean, I do this two to three times a day. And that was like the thing I hated the most. I hated cleaning traditional mm -hmm. blenders it was just super annoying and it gotten even my way and i had like a real need to have that nutrition every day and that was like my biggest hurdle and i knew that if i was struggling with that then i knew other people had to be i find yeah. you you generally create the best invention when you are solving a personal problem that you have and you have a lot of experience with that problem you know so i i'm very glad that you recognize that and and see that benefit because uh to me, that is uh, that's one of the like big goals, right? Is just eliminate the annoying factor. Yeah, like how many how many times, like like anybody out there listening to us, 
ask yourself this question. Every time you pull out your blender, how many times did you cut yourself from, <laughs> from cleaning it? <laughs> yeah, never. You, know? you never have to do that again. Never touch no. the blade, never get near it. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's fast, right? I mean, that's one of the big things. We invented this technology we call TurboJet technology. And the way that works is, you know, we have 50 plus patents filed on our technology. This is one of our granted patents, TurboJet. So if you take this off, by the way, safety feature. So if you want a deep clean, you could turn it on and it won't turn on because it knows the jar is not there. Nice. But you notice that the blade is offset. So you can't really tell from the front, but from the side, you can really tell. Yeah. And why is the blade offset? Well, when you have the blade offset, it creates this tornado effect. And 275 times per second, it slams the particulates into the back wall of the jar. And as a result of doing that, it ends up uh, blending dramatically faster and dramatically better. Uh, and the reason is you're not just using the surface area of the blades to blend, you're using the whole surface area of the back wall of the jar. So this is really not just brute force, more power, bigger battery. I mean, yes, it has a bigger motor, bigger battery than our previous generation, but what it really has going for it is the laws of physics where, you know, larger surface area, faster, better blending. And that's mm -hmm. why even, you know, a big giant kitchen blender can't make a perfectly blended margarita with that perfect margarita machine-like consistency in 20 seconds. It takes longer because they're not using that special shape uh, right. and just, you know, the, the realities of the simulation that are programmed in. Yeah. That was a uh, matrix kind of reference there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to find your guys' products, uh, it, the website's blendjet.com. Blendjet.com. And it's still a new year, something to celebrate, still somewhat of a holiday. So we're hooking it up for people. We know it's, you know, been a crazy tough time. So we we continued our sale, uh, for the new year to hook people up and make it easier to hit those new year resolutions, be a better version. I mean, that's kind of our core, right? At, at what we say, you know, we created Blendjet to help people live longer and healthier lives and become the best version of themselves. And, uh, you know, we want to help you make it easier for, uh, for the new year to uh, avoid the temptation of the food that you probably don't really want to eat, but you might eat because it's convenient. Yeah, definitely. Sure, sure. So um, I, I I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I I forgot to sign up to a lot of people to get in contact with. So um, in the private chat, I put my email. I see it. Uh, yeah. So if, if you could email me, that way we can talk later. Uh, maybe I can get one of those and uh, review it Absolutely. on my channel. I would love um, it. You know, it, it would be really cool actually to have a uh, a, a podcast interview. Um, I know Blendjet has. I, I've seen Blendjet like like all over YouTube, um, articles, I see a lot of people talking about fitness and the new, the, always the start of the new year, better me, better me, better me. So I think it'd be really cool to have you, um, to talk a little bit more and, uh, yeah, maybe we could dive a leave even a little bit deeper. Let's do it. Let's do it. I would love to do it. And, uh, I feel like next level, you need a blend jet too, as well. Yeah. I, I did talk to you the last, uh, tech fluence and, um, uh, I was looking into getting one, but I didn't get an opportunity to follow up with you again. Drop so, your email and let me make it happen. Sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. I know that you talked a lot about, uh, you know, the success that you had on Instagram as well, too. So it would be interesting to hear your story in, in more detail during a podcast, you know, the struggles that you've gone through and the successes that came out of it. That would be really cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's very interesting because very early on, uh, Jen Selter reached out to us and said, hey, uh, I love your product and I would love to be part of your brand. And she's actually co-owner of Blendjet now. Oh. Uh, and, you know, she, of course, has like 30 million followers across all of her channels. Mm -hmm. um, and we we felt like early on, like we were just getting started, right? And you know, when she reached out, it was like, oh my God, Jen Selter reached out. Like, this is so crazy. <laughs> so then my co-founder and I went to New York and we met her and we we had, uh, you know, dinner in New York with like her whole entourage. And then we saw uh, in in uh, New York City in Times Square, there's a billboard for BB of Jen Selter. Uh -huh. uh, and we were with her, seeing the billboard with her, which was pretty funny. And, you know, she ended up joining and becoming part of it. And really early on, like, it was really helpful for our credibility to have her as part of the brand. And, mm -hmm. you know, I would say now we're, we're grateful to have her, but her role has definitely changed. You know, she's really kind of the, the wrangler of all the other influencers, you know, helping to manage our influencer outreach and influencer program and encouraging other influencers to, to be part of the brand. 
Um, but it's uh, it's an interesting world we live in, right? I mean, the influencers are are often more influential than the A-list celebrities. You know, if you take an A-lister who posts about us versus um, someone that a lot of people have probably never heard of, we'll get a lot more sales from the person that most people have never heard of. Yep. And, you know, the difference is this, a follower for one person is not the same value as another. The The value of the followers for the A-listers maybe is good, but a lot of them, people just follow them because they're an A-lister. Those people that have a million followers that have grown organically by having really amazing content, those fans are engaged. Mm -hmm. They believe what you say. You tell yeah. them, hey guys, I use this. This is a good product. They're like, oh my God, guys, you have to buy this. Everybody buys it. You know, some celebrity says this is amazing. Like, I'll give you an example. No offense, Charlie Sheen. But if Charlie Sheen says this is amazing, it's not going to do anything. Nobody's going to nope. buy it. No, nope. Because people aren't following him for that reason, not because they believe what he says, right? They right. think he's funny. He's entertaining. So a lot of uh, influencer marketing is figuring out who actually has influence. And you cannot tell by the follower count. You guys, you guys have real influence. People follow you because... They trust you. If you right. think something's garbage, you're just going to be like, guys, I mean, man, I hate to say it, but this is garbage. Mm -hmm. So I think that genuine sort of voice yeah. is um, the thing that is essential. And uh, if you have a product that sucks, you really shouldn't do influencer marketing because it's just going to backfire for you. Yeah. And it's you know, volumes about you. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, there was a, a review of Blinge at One. You might have seen from freaking reviews. It was terrible. He trashed oh, it. Yeah. He said, he said, this is garbage, right? Yeah. That hurt my heart, right? And I mean, there were things he did where it's like, oh, you shouldn't use it that way. You know, like don't load it up so much with all the ice and hard stuff. But my goal with Blinchette 2, among other goals, was I want to make something that he's going to be impressed by because he's hard and he's mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> we sent him a Blinchette 2, which was terrifying, actually, um because it was like oh my god i know it's good but is he gonna say it's good i think he's gonna say it's good Hopefully. and uh he put out a review of it and he said this is the biggest turnaround i've ever seen for any product like night and day difference he's compared it to his big blender he actually recommended it and he said wow. i gotta be honest this is not endorsed this is not sponsored i mean you know i'm not this is not a paid thing like this is legit organic and the comments were super nice i mean you know how people are on youtube i mean there's a oh, lot yeah. of nice people and then you know like my my uh very inspirational quote I like, Cat Williams. If you ain't got haters, you ain't doing your job right. Right. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, there's going to be haters no matter what. That's fine. You know, blend up your haterade with your, you know, crappy blender. I don't care. Yep. <laughs> um, but when, you, when you're talking about, you know, somebody like that, turn it around, uh, his opinion, total of 180, the comments were like, hey, good on you for listening to, to the people who were critical of you. And mm -hmm. I'll be honest, it hurt, it hurt really, really bad in my heart, you know? And the only thing I could do was ignore it and pretend it didn't exist, or I could just do something about it. And that's what we did is we just did something about it. I watched that video like a hundred times and I'm like taking notes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what he doesn't like this, 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 this it's, that's how you make, that's how you get better. That's how you improve. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's all I'm ever going to do in my life. I'm just going to listen and try to become the best version of myself, best version of the product I'm working on, whatever it is. Um, and just try to make everybody happy. You're not always going to make everybody happy, but if you can make something that makes 99.9% .9 of people happy, then man. Yeah. Well, I think you just gave us the title of our clip, uh, drink your haterade with Blendjet 2. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like it. I like it. So well, we're going to put it on YouTube. <laughs> um, it's going to be fun. Cool. This yep. has been fun, and uh, you know, I definitely am excited for you guys to get your own Blanchet twos and and try it out and have some fun with it. And uh, maybe we can have a cocktail hour. We can all do some frozen margaritas together. Yeah, something good. I got a really good recipe, really good recipe that my neighbor uh, gave. He's like a mixologist type person. Uh, mm -hmm. He he does it as a hobby, but man, he makes good drinks. It's a mint mint rum drink with fresh mint leaf in there. Mm. It is good. Everybody that's tried it is like, I need that recipe. Sounds good to me already. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you guys so much. Appreciate the time. Thanks for having me. And uh, next time we'll be uh, virtually cheersing. Sounds good. Absolutely. All right. You have a good one, man. All right. <laughs> have a great 2021. Thanks. You too. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.